I'm gonna show you how to create a table of contents with images in Webflow. The idea is you click an image on a blog post page and it links down to another section on that same page. Aren't there already solutions for this out there? Yeah, yeah, but these are table contents with images. Does anyone even wanna see this? I don't know, I'm just sharing it in case people wanna see it. Anyways, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's gonna be some jank in this video and anyone who's tried to create this in Webflow probably knows why this is. Let me show you what you'd have to do if you wanted to use CMS fields to accomplish this. Let's say this is the design I want for my collection page. I have an image, I have some text underneath, and I have a link. Now, the issue is you'd have to create a CMS field for every single one of these images and every single one of these text blocks. That would be 18 if you have nine different sections. And then you also have to be able to link down to specific sections on the page, which means you'd probably have to create CMS fields for all the sections you're linking down to. Oftentimes, this is not possible to do because there are limits to how many CMS fields you can add to a single collection page. Now, it does depend on what your plan you're using, but in most cases, this just simply doesn't work. Let's look at how in-page anchor linking works. I have this test anchor link. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a link with that pound and then section dash one. That is now linking to the div with the ID of section dash one. Now I actually have to create an ID or a div with this ID. So I'm gonna create that div block down here. I've added it to the very bottom and I'm gonna add that ID of section dash one. Now what happens is when I click this anchor link, it's gonna link down to this section, which is the div block with the ID of section dash one. Now let's say instead of linking down to this div block down here, I wanted to link to a section in my rich text field on my collection page. All I'd have to do is I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna delete this div block, and then I'm gonna go into my CMS collections and go to this blog post, and let's say we want it right here. I'm gonna add a new div by adding an embed block and then saying div ID equals section dash one, and then I'm gonna close it with another div and then I'm gonna save it. And now what happens, I have to publish it. What happens when we publish it is this test anchor link is now gonna be linked to the section in my CMS field. So when I click this, it's gonna link down to this section, which we added right here. It's invisible, but it is still there in the code. So that's how we're gonna be controlling this. Now let's go ahead and set up all the in-page IDs for our anchor links. So let's go ahead back here over to my CMS collections, go into this post and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this for now. I'm going to add a new one above my chapter one and I'm going to call it div ID equals, we'll call it chapter one and then I'm going to close it and we're done there. I'm going to copy this embed code and I'm going to paste it right here and then I'm going to go ahead and call it chapter two and then paste it right here and then call this one chapter three. And we're good with the anchor links. We can save it and we can hop out. And what I like to do is I like to create a, an entirely new page and then just save this page as a draft when I'm actually creating my table of contents design. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna add a div block and you're gonna wanna use the same class that you're using on your blog template page as your container. And the reason why you wanna do that, so I'm using blog container. The reason why you wanna do that is because you want to copy the style for how it's going to show up on the actual blog page. So I'm going to copy this blog container class because my rich text element is inside of it. And I'm going to go to this page and I'm going to paste that code right in here to this div block. Boom. Now it's copying that same styling and I can go ahead and style the, the inner content however I wish. So we'll add a div block and we'll call this one our TOC uh, grid. And then I can change it to a grid. We'll make it three columns and then get rid of the rows. And then inside of the grid, I'm going to add a link block and an image inside of the link block and a text block inside of the link block. And I'm gonna share that same styling that we had before. So we'll just do flex horizontal vertical and then center it, center the text align. And then I'm also gonna get rid of that underline and change the color to black, okay? And then I'm gonna change the text to say chapter one. I'm gonna change the image to be my image, whatever I want it to be. And then I'm also gonna add some spacing underneath and we'll call this our TOC image. So now what we need to do is we need to set up the anchor links, which are gonna link down to the sections that we already set up with those IDs. So for this one, we're gonna link down to chapter one. We're gonna copy and paste it a couple times. We're just gonna do three chapters for now. And we'll call this one chapter two. I'm gonna change the image real quick. And then I'm gonna link down to chapter two and do the same thing here with chapter three. 
call it chapter three, and then I'm gonna change the image and I'm gonna link down to chapter three. Now, how this works, how do we get this design in our CMS collection page? We're gonna add an embed code, but we actually have to copy the code. So what we have to do is we have to publish it. It's gonna be live for now on the staging site. So you're gonna to wanna to remember to hide this page when you actually publish the live site. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the page and hit view page source. Now you're gonna to wanna to remember how this is all set up. We don't wanna copy the blog container because the blog container is already on the CMS page. We, but what we do want to do is we want to copy the TOC grid. That's the class we want to copy. So I'm going to control F and C, say TOC grid dash one, because that is the class. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy everything that's inside of it. It might be a little bit confusing because you might not, if you're new to looking at the back end and the code, it might be a little confusing in here, but the more and more you do this, uh, the more and more this is gonna make sense. So one thing I like to do is I like to go to the end of the code sometimes and go in reverse because sometimes it's easier to figure out what needs to be copied and what needs to be left out. But basically I'm just gonna copy all of this. So here's chapter three, and then I'm gonna keep going uh, to about right here. And this is gonna copy, so A means the link, and then the, the div here is going to be my TOC grid. So I'm gonna copy that, and then I'm gonna go ahead in here to my blog post, and I'm actually just gonna paste it as an embed code. And it's gonna read the code uh, the same way a normal uh, website's code gets read, it's just gonna read it inside of this rich text field. If I publish this page, and then I go back here to this page, it now is showing exactly how it was showing on that hidden page that we had set up. And it's already linking to those IDs that we had set up earlier. So one goes to one, two goes to two, and three goes to three. What I also like to do for styling purposes, if you see on this other page that I set up, it's got nine chapters. So that can get pretty tall vertically. So on mobile devices, I added this scrolly block so that it doesn't take up a lot of vertical space, but that it still links down to each section. If you wanna learn how to do that, you can watch the previous video that I posted, which shows you how to create this scrolly section. And then you can also control the design after you put it in here. Maybe we need a little bit more spacing underneath. So I can go back into here. I can take this grid, maybe add 50 of spacing underneath. And then when I publish it, it's going to now have that spacing underneath. Boom, looks a lot better like that. And then also when you're ready to publish this, you're gonna wanna take this page, go to the settings and then save as draft because you don't want this page to show up in Google's index. And you also don't want users to be able to get to it. The styles are going to be saved within Webflow. But remember, if you delete this grid now and then you go up here to remove these CSS styles, these styles are gonna get deleted from the global CSS style sheet. These table of contents are not gonna get shown anymore. So make sure you keep these styles somewhere on the website so that it stays in the global CSS style sheet. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.